Wow, look at this! It's like a small black little fairy. But what kind of insect is it? Let me tell you more. Oh my god, what are these? Is this a box full of scorpions? Nope, these are in fact a very rare and endangered stick insect from the country of Peru. It is known as the Black Beauty, or its binomial name, Perufasma schultai. Unlike many other species of stick insects, which you may imagine are green or brown, these guys are black. Not just that, they have a beautiful pair of crimson wings. Let's see if some of them want to show their wings, because once they feel disturbed, ah, you see the red beautiful wings? When they feel disturbed, they open their wings and flash them as a warning. And the red and black color combination on these spectacular, rare, endemic and endangered stick insects is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my god, look at that, it's amazing. But wait a second, Bart Coppens, what are you doing with these stick insects? Well, these are my pets and I breed them in captivity. And I prepared an educational video for you about the life cycle of this wonderful and beautiful insect. My YouTube channel is completely demonetized by YouTube. When I upload videos, I don't make money from them. So I promised my fans, if we reach 100 patrons on the crowdfunding website Patreon, I'm going to release for you a special video in which I film the life history of a rare and beautiful species of insect. And that insect was going to be Perufasma schultai, the ones you're looking at right now. How to breed these in captivity, how to raise them, you're going to find out today. In Part Breeds It. Let's start the intro. Ladies and gentlemen, today it's time to incubate some eggs that just arrived. Let's see what kind of eggs they are in the first place. Hmm. They are pretty round. They are brown. What could this be? I have a second tube of eggs as well. Let's open them up. Do you guys have any clue of what it could be? Interesting, interesting. And I'm going to incubate them inside this container that has a layer of vermiculite. The incubation may take several months, in fact. Hmm. And as always, the life cycle starts with eggs. 
vermiculite is very useful for incubating stick insects. But sadly, they take a long time to incubate. Make sure to keep them a little bit humid as well. Let's update the insect breeding diary. Dear diary, incubating the eggs of the black beauty stick insects takes quite long. It can even take over six months, which is half a year. What seems like minutes to my viewers is actually half a year to me in real life. What am I supposed to do if I have to do so much waiting? Insects are my escapism from the real world. Come to think of it, I haven't really kept up with the real world for a while. Let's see how society has been doing for the past few years. Man, I live under a rock. Let's see how society is doing, since it takes six months, six months to incubate the eggs of these stick insects anyway. Let's catch up. Maybe it's better if I stick to insects. Dear Diary, can you honestly blame me for using insects and nature as my escapism? Either way, this segment is only a few minutes long to my viewers, but I wonder if any of them realize it took me half a year to incubate the babies. Six months later, let's check back on the eggs. I think I saw something move. Well, 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 well. Well, 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 many months later, ladies and gentlemen, we open the box. This is like six months later, but let's see what we find inside. Something very exciting. Our first babies. This here is a baby of the Perufas Mashutai. Oh yes. But there's more. If we look inside the container, we see it contains more babies here on the side. And they are all looking very healthy, that is excellent news. These animals can eat many different plants, but most people prefer to use ligustrum or privet, which is what I am going to be using as well. Um, let me attempt to pick up one of the babies for a second. The... Ah, here's one of the babies, and let's put him here on the plant. If he's hungry enough, he should start eating pretty soon. Let's take another baby. Yay! Let's put you in. And another baby. Let's put you in as well. There you go. I hope they start eating. Ah, look at that. So cute. A tiny stick insect baby. I'll make some better close ups for you guys later, but first we should leave it alone. So it can start eating in peace with no stress, which is important to its health. Dear Diary, while the first babies have been born, the waiting is not over yet. Many of the eggs still have to hatch. It takes a while for all of them to come out. 
I also think that... Oh my god, do you hear that? Babies! Uh oh. Guess what I found here this morning. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That, my friends, is called multiple babies. Yay! Looks like I'm gonna be a daddy once again. There's more of him here. Yeah, I think it's time to uh, rescue them, quote unquote. Let's place you little rascals in here. I kind of wonder. Can you overpopulate stick insects? Um, I know they can survive in huge population densities in captivity. So maybe it's just me. Maybe it's my experience with caterpillars. Because caterpillars, some species definitely don't like being overcrowded. Oh, my babies, please. Oop. Let's put you guys into your new home. See if you like it. Hopefully, yeah, you will. That's it. I suppose we should give them some time to eat. I left the babies alone for about a month. They seem to be doing quite well and there were no losses. Of course, during this time, I made the point to regularly replace their food with fresh food and to clean their enclosure, so I didn't literally leave them alone. When raising stick insects, it's important to replace their food every few days, so they have fresh and hydrated plant leaves. It's crazy how such tiny little babies will grow up into such large stick insects. Isn't it amazing? Let's check back on the little babies about a month later. About a month later, they are definitely significantly bigger. I do believe most of these should be the second insta right now. I know they still look small, but trust me, their size has nearly doubled. Their eyes also kind of look different to me somehow. Shout out to Tallo, also known as Josh, for sharing these eggs with me. I'm grateful for them, dude. This species is reportedly quite easy to keep even if you are a beginner. They thrive around 21 degrees Celsius, which is considered room temperature. Even in temper temperate climates, the insects grow quite well without any additional heating. This is an advantage to me. Look at this cute little dinosaur. We must protect its innocence at all costs. Here are some of his brothers and sisters. Their sizes vary a little, because the time it took them to hatch from their eggs also differs. Some are born le weeks later than their siblings, and this, this age difference is significant for an insect. Most are in star 2 and some are in star 3s right now. And I had zero losses, zero deaths so far, that's a great start if you ask me. I love them so much. Dear Diary, the black beauty stick insects were making marvelous progress. I decided to check back once again about a month later. Yes, we jump ahead in time for another month. While these are large time skips, this is necessary in order not to make the video extremely long. In fact, if this video is already too long as it is, I could just make a 20 second TikTok video and get the same amount of views. Several weeks later, our babies are growing and I see some progress and I think this is already in star number three. That's excellent. Great. We shall have a look inside. This setup is really simple, but... It appears to be working for them, so yeah. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Wow. 
And we have to be careful because the babies are trying to run everywhere. But wow, this is great. Look at that. Well, that's cute. Looks like it's refusing to settle down though. Hey, calm down little one. Calm down little one, please. Man, it's fast. Calm down. Clearly most of the babies are doing well. And I'm impressed because this is my first uh, pet stick insect I've raised in years, years time. I used to raise many species of stack insect back in the days, but since then I specialized myself in other insects like moths and I haven't done this in a long time. So that is pretty crazy if you ask me. Wow, they're absolutely gorgeous however. I, make, I am really enjoying this. And I've kept count of their skin sheds. And it's, it appears so that uh, most of them, I think this is uh, in star number three. So basically the third skin shed. I actually don't know how many they have in total from the top of my head, but I imagine it's like five. I mean, that's the case with most insects. Of course, I shouldn't generalize it, but most of the time it's like five. Hello there, little baby. Can you guys see them? I hope you guys can see this well. Oh, yeah, they're a bit shy, eh? but that's fine. That's completely fine. I should film you guys maybe one time in daylight because this type of lighting is awkward. Um, as you can see, they have very nice beady yellow eyes. And black bodies, long antennae. They seem to, to some extent, avoid being exposed to a lot of light. As you can see, they are kind of moving away from the light source. If I reposition them, which is kind of like moving away from the camera. Um, I've been feeding them privet. Scientific name Ligustrum. I think this is Ligustrum ovalifolium. It's a type of privet often used like in hedgerows and stuff. And gardens. Very cool. Very cute and very small. Can Bart raise stick insects? Well, I must say that so far it's going quite well. It helps that it's a beginner species, obviously. I haven't raised stick insects in almost a decade. I do believe that right now. They've shed their skins again, and I think most of them are in instar number three. Correct me if I'm wrong. It can be hard to see, but I think it's three. This remarkable and relatively new species appears restricted in a very small area in Peru, in what is called the Corderilla del Condor in northern Peru. It lives at altitudes of 1200 to 1800 meters and is found in small patches of dwarf forest. The host plant is a so far unidentified species of schinus in the wild, known as pepper tree. But in captivity they like to eat ligustrum or privet. I'll tell you more about their ecology and biology later in the video as well. This species is actually more strictly nocturnal. Most of the time feeding happens in the darkness. During the day they have more of a tendency to hide and sit still. Therefore it's important to give the insects proper darkness from time to time. Right now they are quite small, but I promise they will catch up soon in size, so don't worry.
Together we will observe the life cycle. And as you can see, other brothers and sisters are doing rather well. A nice little community of stick insect babies. This species I definitely recommend to everyone. After filming their progress, I'll make another update in about a month. Dear Diarrhea I mean, sorry, diary. Diary, not diarrhea. It's my accent, okay? <sighs> Let's check back on them. Alright, people, it is once again time to check the progress of our little stick insects, because to be honest, there's going to be a little update. Our babies have grown so big that I think it's really time to give them a bigger enclosure and I am just about to do that right now. Meet our babies next enclosure, yay! It's an insect pop-up cage. I know it's a bit, uh, a bit dirty maybe, because it's been used a lot. I plan to order fresh ones soon, but before that, let's give them some more space. I think that's more important right now. There you go. So in here is a bottle with privet. We should find a way to stabilize this. Basically, I'm going to take the babies out and place them in their new home right now. This has to be done really kind of carefully. They will probably run everywhere. Let's see. Just for the sake of a health inspection, here are our babies. And as you can see, they are doing really well, even if I say so myself. The amount of losses so far is one. And I just saw one of them drop itself to the floor. So we have to be careful that they don't escape. Wow. They're looking good though, let's put them in a new cage fast. Let's hope they appreciate this setup, for real. There's food in it, so that's what you guys like, right? Come on, go and eat. Go and eat, friends. There you go. You like it. Taking all the babies. And so they do like to drink from time to time. Bit of water so they can drink. If they are thirsty. There you go. Enjoy! Friends. Ah, and now they are in a bigger enclosure. They seem to be quite happy about it. It's interesting to see a species of stick insect that is purely black. You have to wonder though, why are they so black? Surely being black has benefits, because it also has disadvantages. For example, people would be outraged if they starred in a certain movie about a certain mermaid. But what's the benefit? Well. Being black can help with thermoregulation, for instance, since insects are called blooded and black absorbs the most amount of warmth from sunlight. That being said, I guess most of this is purely a conjecture, since I'm not really sure how they thermoregulate in the wild and what benefits there are to them being black anyway. Who knows? We need more data about this insect in the wild. Either way, now soon it's time to leave our beautiful dark little creatures alone. So pretty, so awesome. Let's see how they are doing about a month later. Dear diary, over a month has passed, believe it or not. But now, ah, our precious little baby babies. Ooh, I apologize. I just can't help it. They are too adorable, and they make me feel like a mother. But seriously, they're growing well, and it's bussin', no cap, for real, for real. 
They're growing so fast, your diary. I had to place them in a newer and bigger enclosure. Let's show how I did that. Ladies and gentlemen, our stick insect children have grown wonderfully. A little bit too wonderfully because they're starting to eat the food rapidly. And I'm thinking it is time to upgrade their enclosure. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at their size and their development. Let's go. All right, people, it's time to inspect the stickies carefully. And I think it's time to remove all of them from this enclosure. Because this is, this enclosure is way too small for them. Forgive me, let me get them out, okay? Give me the time for a moment. Oh wow, people. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm actually rather amazed right now about how much they have grown. They are really a lot bigger right now. Wow, people. Wow, people, look at that. I think the increase in their size is actually quite astonishing. But we have to be fast because they keep climbing like crazy. But as you can see, our babies are really significantly bigger. And this is, uh, I think, one of the final instar nymph stages before they reach maturity. You can see they already have wing buds here. That is actually incredible, wow. But they're so fast, they just want to walk all the time. Now with these results, I'm actually quite pleased. Unfortunately, filming them is very hard because they are just panicking because I touch them. Uh, maybe it's time to place them in a new container because they are just freaking out right now. Like totally freaking out. But look at that. They have little wing buds right now. So uh, that means that soon when they shed their skins again, they are going to be the final... Uh, in star they are really beautiful they have these bright yellow eyes with long antennae they are quite a bit of a character they are quite curious crawling around like this really awesome now, of course if you don't disturb them that much they don't tend to move around like this all the time it's just because i kind of freak them out by taking them out of their cage but they look excellent they look healthy very few of them are missing legs. I think I saw one that's missing one legs. But in general, like... That's pretty awesome. It's been a really, really, really long time since I raised stick insects. Like, since I started this channel seven years ago, I used to have cool stuff like stick insects. But then I became more of a moth specialist. So this is like a throwback to the past for me but wow they are they are lovely i love them wow super let's put them in a new cage now there's something that almost every animal appreciates and that's food so here in the back i have a big cage you can see it is here it's very large and this is the new enclosure of the stick insects you see, I'm starting to think that the old cage is starting to become a little bit too small for them. Therefore, I will place them here in a new container. Setup is otherwise pretty much the same. It has leaves of privet. And it's basically a large net cage instead of a smaller one. But for this species, it should work great. 
I haven't counted how many we have, but I think we have like 11 stick insects in total. Anyway, this is a bit of a boring footage for you guys maybe, but hang in there, I promise it's gonna get good. So, it's actually quite a happy moment for me. It feels like we're making progress and it's going well. And, you know, as an insect breeder, you want everything to go well. You put a lot of attention, love and care into taking care of these animals. And it's not always easy, you can fail. Even though this is kind of one of the easier, easier beginner species of stick insects. I was still a little bit nervous because I haven't done it in a long time, you know. So it can be, then it can be challenging. If your experience with stick insects is probably a, a very easy, it's like a breeze. But... Yo, that's great. Let's put these in here. So I hope you guys are happy to see a stick insect video on my channel. It's a long time coming. Um, it's a bigger diversity of insects on my channel you can watch, I suppose. Anyway, let's skip. Wow. Fantastic, people. Pyrophas mashultai. Truly is a fascinating insect. So let's see what they're doing. Well, well, it looks like they are enjoying their new enclosure. Stick insects are fascinating animals to study, aren't they? Did you know that worldwide there are over 3,000 species of stick insects, or the order of Phasmatodea, that have been described? Not all, but definitely many species of them thrive in captivity and are kept in the pet trade. Stick insects are among the world's largest and certainly among the world's longest insects. A stick insect is covered in China in 2014, for example, measured 24.5 inches, that's 62.4 centimeters. A scientific name for the order of stick insects is Phasmatodea, which derives from the Greek word phasma, meaning an apparition, phantom or ghost. These are the first stick insects I have raised in a long, long time. In fact, it was, I think it was eight years ago since I last raised stick insects. But if people enjoy the content, I will definitely consider raising more species of them too in the future. I'm a newbie with them forever, so I have to start with the easy species first. Well, some of them start eating eating immediately, and I suppose that's a good sign. Just look at that stripping away the leaf. That's pretty cool, and that's pretty cute. So, I'm surprised that so far, I really haven't had losses. Of course, it is again a very easy species, but I'm not a, a professional with uh, fast mids, so it's really surprising to see how easy they are. If I enjoy the experience, I may end up breeding more species of fast mids for this channel. Maybe eventually, who knows? And soon they will be uh, shedding their skins again. And after that, I'm pretty sure they will have reached maturity. And after that point, I am pretty sure we're going to see some matings, egg laying, and a repetition of the whole life cycle that we've documented just right now. Very cool, very fascinating. Just look at it eating the leaf right here. Yum, yum, yum. What do you guys think? Should I add more species of insects to my channel? For the past seven years, it's mostly been about butterflies and moths. Of course, they're still my main passion, but it can't hurt to have some good diversity in there. Wow, it's just digging in, isn't it? Such ferocity, such hunger. Oh, looks like it's full perhaps, or it's moving on to another leaf. Oh, thank you, buddy. 
to some good footage. Many of the other ones are just kind of chilling here in the corner of the cage, which I suppose is fine. Most of the time they're not sitting on the plant, but I suppose they like the bigger surface area of the net cage that they're in. Funny, huh? This one is casually cleaning its antenna. I don't know if you can see it. But it's bending its antenna down, chewing on it. I guess it's just cleaning the rubbish off it. Just showing them uh, chilling in their new enclosure, some of their behaviors. Most of the time they don't do that much. It's either eating, being inactive, or grooming. So, they've been forming really well on room temperature. Temperature in my house is not even that high. Right now it's winter, but central heating is on. Despite that, they are thriving, really, and so it seems. Hmm. Very interesting. Gotta love their beautiful eyes, though. Oh, there it is. It's just finished grooming the antenna. Very large. And maybe if I put my finger next to it, you guys can see the scale and the fact that, yes, they do have grown a lot. Remember how small they were when they hatched from their egg? And like one of them could fit on my fingertip. So, they've pretty much outgrown that. Now, that being said, this is not a big species. It's, I would even go as far as to call it a small species. So they're not going to be that huge, but it's cool to see the progress, huh? Anyway, people, let's um, leave them alone. I think we harassed them enough for now. Using this setup, we can leave them alone for at least maybe one week and then check back later. I think the next time I'm gonna show them is when they shed their skins to the final life stage, which should be quite exciting. Dear Diary, the insects are doing really great right now. I could not be more pleased. It's beyond my expectations. I do have a problem coming up in the future. You see, I am not just an exotic pet owner that likes to show off exotic insects on YouTube. I am somebody who actually works with insect conservation and I've been offered a new project to document butterflies and moths in the rainforest in Brazil. It's a dream come true, but it does mean that I potentially have to leave my babies behind for a long time. And my mom will take care of them in that time, however. Thanks, mom. In other news. About a month after the last update, something awesome happened. I found the first adult, yes, the black beauty stick insects. Some of them are reaching maturity. Let me show you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the show. And uh, we are back after a few weeks to check back on the progress of our black beauties or Perufas Mashultai. But before I show you the updates and what has changed, um, it's important me for me to share some observations with you. First of all, I have been counting the instars of these babies um, every few weeks, every time they shed their skin. I've written down their instars. And right now, all of them are instar number five because they just shed their skins again. But one thing that I notice is that the females have uh, one extra instar. Right now I have a group of adults and sub-adults um, and it turns out some of the males actually became adults after five skin shed. Well, a lot of the females are still sub-adults after uh, five skin shed. Now I've looked into the literature and I found limited evidence that actually supports my claim. But it seems that this, this is mostly an unpublished observation. 
So that's really cool because uh, I'm total noob on stick insect. I um, <clears throat> I'm more of an entomologist who specializes in butterflies and moths instead, not stick insect. So I thought I was going crazy. I was uh, emailing some of my uh, of the other knowledgeable people that uh, I know that are into uh, fast mids. And some of them even said, no, Bart, that's not true. They have five instars and the, and the males just uh, mature faster. I was all right, maybe I made a mistake. But I swear that each time I saw all of them uh, shed their skins around the same time in the time span of a few weeks, I written it down because I was counting the instars to film this life cycle video. And I swear, I swear that the males uh, after five skin sheds are now adults. And the females are still sub-adults. So um, that's an observation I want to throw out there. It's the observation that females have an extra instar and my males just matured and I'm going to show you. Let's go. So um, the plant I've been using for them is Privet which is what most people use. And people have to apologize for the poor lighting. The moment I'm filming this is the middle of winter, okay. Um, therefore we have to use artificial light, unfortunately. So, funny thing about this species, let me adjust this uh, unprofessional little setup here. Funny thing is about this species, as they've become adults, they've actually become way more shy. So here you can see a kitchen roll that I included in their uh, container. Good fucking thing. A funny thing, um, a funny thing about this species is that since they become bigger and they became adults, they've become way more shy. And uh, what do I mean with shy? Well, I must show you, because in their container there's um, kitchen rolls. And here, here I'll show you one of the kitchen rolls. So why do I put them in their container? Because well, they really love to hide. And if we look in here, I don't know if you can see it. It's hard to see. Let's get some light inside of there. Like, as you can see, most of my stick insects are hiding inside of this. Let's see if we can shine some light inside of it. It's hard. Maybe if I put my hand in there, you can see like, uh, a lot of them are just hiding in, the, in here, can you see that? Mm, that's actually hard to film because it's dark. But you can clearly see that there's like uh, five or more stick insects hiding in here. Whoa. Sorry, filming this is just so awkward. Whoa. Oh, this looks really cool. If I put them here against the lamp, then you'll see what I mean. See that? So I scared most of my stick insects away. Some of them have run out of the tube, but a few of them are still hiding. And as you can see, the species, they, uh, they clearly like to hide during the day and come out at night to feed. You can give them objects like this uh, kitchen roll for them to hide in, I suppose. It's funny. It seems like the bigger they become, the more shy they become, the more they like to hide. But maybe that's just me. But since they've grown bigger, I've not really seen many of them. At night they come out to feed from the privet though. And now here we have one of the first adults. How can I tell that it's an adult? Because when this species reaches adulthood, they grow wings, like uh, a lot of insects do. But what's really funny and interesting about their wings is that they don't use their wings to fly at all. Instead, their wings have been reduced to these very tiny, tiny little things that they can use to uh, warm predators. In particular, their hind wings are bright uh, red. And when the insects feels a little bit stressed or exposed, they will open their wings and expose the bright red in hopes of startling a predator. Mm. 
Now to film this is certainly not easy because the insect is mostly interested in running all the time. That's perhaps my fault for touching or disturbing them a little right now. But it is difficult to get a good close-up of them when they are trying to run all over the place. Especially in the middle of winter when I have terrible lighting. But here you can see how the hind wings, oh my god it's found my hand, are very remarkable. The people When it comes to the females, most of them are also getting quite large. When it comes to the females, some of them are getting quite large. I presume this is a sub-adult female. So you can see they are coloring up wonderfully. Well, not that there is much color there, but they're really nice and black with the yellow eyes. And the size is respectable. All of you have seen how we started up, started this video with such tiny little eggs and babies. And now these uh, things are well. I mean the progress is pretty nice all things considered, right? Isn't it? I think that is pretty awesome. Although it's very difficult to hold her still. The creatures on my channel are usually not that difficult for me to film, but these phasmids, they are just... Just stop running, just stop running. But just for reference, uh, now you kind of understand the size in relation to, I suppose, my hand. Of course, you shouldn't be handling them all the time. There's no insects that really enjoy that kind of stuff. I should say that they are really, really beautiful though. I do not regret breeding them. I'm very satisfied to have these. They're honestly really kind of amazing. Ladies and gents, whoa! The first stick insect is finally an adult. And it's looking quite incredible, amazing. What's unusual about this species is that their wings are reduced and instead of using their wings to fly, they use their wings to warn. That's right. As you can see, the wings are bright blood red and highly contrast with their dark black body. This is called a daimatic display or daimatic behavior. Daimatic behavior or startle display means any pattern of bluffing behavior in an animal that lacks strong defenses, such as suddenly dis displaying conspicuous eye spots, or in this, in this case, bright red wings. In order to scare off or momentarily distract a predator, thus giving the prey animal an opportunity to escape. That being said, it is not true that these insects are entirely defenseless. They can, in some cases, spray an irritating and noxious liquid towards attackers. The defensive spray, when scientists analyzed it, did contain noxious chemicals, such as iridoids, which are to my understanding a form of monoterpenoids. Terpenes and terpenoids are also the primary constituents of essential oils of many plants and flowers. Some insects use terpenes as a form of defense. 
the chemicals have a strong odor and can be irritating in some occasions and can be used to ward off predatory invertebrates and other animals. But why am I mentioning this? Well, that's because perhaps the insect is not entirely bluffing. And they actually have a defense mechanism they can use to back up their threats. That would make it a form of aposematism, maybe. I am yeah, not we're... sure if it's predators not, huh? learn to avoid them in the wild based off their color alone, though. This warrants more studies when it comes to their environment, natural habitat and natural enemies. Either way, to summarize what I'm trying to say here is that the blood red wings are definitely used to startle and scare away animals. Although I am not sure to what extent they are simply bluffing. It depends on how effective their chemical spray is, I suppose. The amazing beautiful contrast between the red and the black though is what makes them so popular as pets. They are like amazing black little fairies. And the red is just a cherry on top. So, so, so beautiful. I do apologize for the poor lighting. It's in the middle of winter and I cannot bring my stick insects outdoors to film them or they would be hurt by the freezing cold. It's also dark outside. Due to a lack of daylight, the indoor videos look a bit darker and have awkward lighting. I hope you enjoy it either way. This is the group of insects we have left. So far we only have one adult. The rest are only sub-adults or sub-sub-adults. It depends on the gender since males have one less instar than the females. If I spray the leaf with water, maybe they'll sit still because they are usually thirsty. Have some water to drink. Yeah. Now people, it is a little bit difficult to film all these rascals at the same time because a lot of them they like to hide in the back, some of them like to hide in the kitchen uh, paper rolls. So all of them are a bit scattered and out of focus, running around. But I say that the first results look very good to be honest right now. Like here in the back where you can see several uh, individuals showing healthy amounts of activity. And um, I'm very new to filming stick insects. Most are still sub-adults as we can see. Still thriving. But these will soon also shed their skins and become adults. All right, people. All right, all right, I think we've seen enough. It's time to close the cage, to stop stressing them, and then we check back on them uh, in two months. Because I'm going to um, leave my country for two months. That's difficult. That's kind of funny. Sometimes when I'm watching them, they're just hanging out like this in a group in the back of their cage. That's so silly and crazy. At least their resting behavior, I guess you can call it roosting, seems to be semi-social maybe. Because when they are resting somebody or somewhere else, such as in the uh, kitchen uh, role, they're all in there together too as a group. So I guess in some way they uh, sense the presence of maybe members of their own species when it comes to finding a place to hide, I suppose, and find shelter. Or it's a coincidence because they just choose the best place in their enclosure which happens to be this corner, but I don't think so. Because sometimes they're not here and all of them are like in a kitchen role, so I think they do choose to settle where they want in response to other members of their species, I suppose. It's really kind of cool, man. It's funny. All right, people, so um, I am this uh, silly internet personality who films the life cycles of insects in captivity. It's what I do. And I have really weird hair. But one thing not many people know is that I study insects professionally. Um, I guess you'd say that I am an entomologist. 
and um, sometimes that involves international travel so I've been hired to study moths and butterflies in the Brazilian Atlantic rainforest for almost two months. I'm very excited to go and, uh, and to share some of my experiences with all of you. However, it does mean I'll have to leave my pets behind. <coughs> Ooh, I'm sorry for that, just had to sneeze. But it does mean I have to leave my, um, my stick bugs behind for almost two months. However, my parents are going to take care of them. I'm going to leave some instructions behind to write it down on paper. So they know what to do, they know um, what plant to feed them, how often to feed them. But it does mean that from now, we're going to have a massive time skip. And I think that when I come back to the Netherlands and um, in the next segment, you're going to see that all of these uh, stick bugs will have uh, matured probably. Two months is a long time. And I think most of them are uh, in their final instars right now. At least the males are. I think the females have one extra in more instar. Um, but there's a chance that when I come back to this country in two months, all of them will have matured. So and, uh, that's going to be interesting. I should take this off, it's warm. Anyway, um, I am on my way to uh, an entomological expedition in Brazil to uh, document rare insects in the rainforest. Uh, it sucks to leave my pets behind, unfortunately. That's the thing with keeping pets, you know, they're an emotional investment and a time investment and you need to have people to take care of them in case you have to leave your country, you know, or if you have something else to do. Thankfully, this is a very easy species. So uh, while I'm doing entomology in the rainforest, my uh, parents will know exactly what to do. Otherwise, I will call them. But uh, yeah, let's go and then check back on the stick insects. Hmm. It's a bit unusual, I know, but... Dear diary, the insects have grown wonderfully. But something else that is growing wonderfully is Bart Coppens. You see, Bart once started out as a tiny YouTuber. A boy with a camera that was bored and started filming insects. But Bart is nowadays slowly growing into being a true entomologist. And that's... That's why he is being offered research opportunities and jobs that involve studying insects. I think the last step in Bart's personal development is to stop talking about himself in third person. That would be great. But for now, Bart has to leave his home country for a long time to do butterfly and moth conservation in the rainforest in Brazil. Let me briefly show you, even though it's a little bit off topic, it's also relevant to the breeding project. Where am I going? Ladies and gentlemen, I am on my way to Brazil. Since recently, I'm sponsored by a natural reserve named the Agua. It's called Reserva Ecológica de Guapiatsu. And they want to collaborate with me because they think I have the talent to do insect conservation for their natural reserve. And they covered all my travel expenses, including my flight tickets, travel costs and much more. Now I realize this segment may look a little bit off topic, so you can skip it if you like, but I wanted to include it. Not only am I proud of it, because I always wanted to use my skills and talents to contribute to conservation and help nature, and help insects in particular because I truly care about them, it also explains the time skip that is in our video. My job is to document and research the insect species that are found in a natural reserve. But in particular, I focus on butterflies and moths. Yes, I realize this is a stick insect video, but actually in reality my specialism is moths and butterflies. And some of the things I am investigating, for example, are their life histories. How they grow up from egg to moth, when, where and on what plants. This information is still missing for many species, unfortunately. The truth is though that you cannot protect the species and conserve it if you don't even know what it eats and how it lives. I always wanted to be more than a YouTuber who films insects. 
I want to be somebody who helps nature. I also want to have practical experience with real entomology and real insects in the wild. Not always in cages or plastic boxes. Don't get me wrong, I love raising insects in captivity. But I don't really think it's possible to become an insect expert just by looking at them in captivity. You're missing the big picture if you do that. There are so many important elements in their surroundings that contribute to their ecology and evolution that if you just raise insects in captivity, you completely miss all of that information. My goal is to become an entomologist. Even though I don't have a degree, I'm trying hard to do work that involves real research and real entomology. And while breeding insects in captivity for entertainment is fun, sorry guys, I don't think that qualifies as an entomologist. One thing I frequently did was to attract moths with artificial light. Using a mercury vapor light bulb, I attracted hundreds of moths. That's because I am also trying to investigate some of the local moth species and found a huge and amazing diversity of them. Just look at the amazing variety of shapes and colors. This channel is demonetized by YouTube, sadly. That means that when I upload a video, I don't make any money from it through YouTube. And they are not supporting me, unfortunately. But I do have crowdfunding. If fans and viewers enjoy my video, some of them donate money to me. This is one of the things that enables me to do my work with insects as well. So if you enjoy the video, consider supporting my channel. Not only will your donations support my videos, they will also support my work with insect conservation. Oh, I almost forgot. Since you're watching a stick insect video, you're probably wondering if I found any stick insects too in Brazil. Guess what? I did! Let me show you. This is a common species I found in Brazil. It's Cladoxeus gripphalius. And they are common in some of the lowland rainforests. It's a long and thin species of stick insects, I do suppose. Like many of them. There are dozens of species in the rainforest, some of them well documented and some of them rarely documented. Even the common species don't always seem to be properly documented, so there is that. This is actually a very rare one that's very rarely found. This is a female stick insect from the genus Dinelitron. It's from a unusual family of phasmids, the Prisopodidae. These enigmatic stick insects are rarely found, especially females from the genus Dinelitron. In fact, my find was so special that scientists contacted me because they wanted to collect the specimen for me, for scientific research. Some scientists are interested in taking a DNA sample from her, to link males of her species to the respective female. But why? Because females are rarely coll collected, and some of the Dinelitron species, only males have been described. But females were never found. So DNA can link males to unknown females. This female has short and stubby legs, also a short and stubby body. She's also quite flat and can rest close to the surface of her host plant. Her favorite food seems to be the leaves of the mimosa tree. It's all fantastic, isn't it? But it's time to stop because it's time to go back to the Netherlands and see how my stick insects are doing. I could show you more, but honestly, it's off topic. This video is about the black beauty stick insect, not my rainforest adventures. Right now, my mom has been taking care of the stick insect for several months, and I hope my mom did a good job. Thanks, mom, for taking care of them. It's time to check back on them soon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is me, your Lord and Savior, Bart Coffins. 
And I am back in the Netherlands after doing entomology in Brazil for seven weeks. That's a lot of time. And in these seven weeks, I wasn't taking care of these animals. It was my parents. In particular, my mom. Shout out to my mother. Some of you have seen her on YouTube. My mom has been taking care of these insects for seven weeks. And I think she's done a pretty good job. Much to my surprise, because my mom doesn't have too much experience taking care of insects. But I left her a care sheet of what to do and how to take care of them. And all of them survived and all of them have grown a lot. And that's what I want to show you today. Now the cage it looks a little bit empty, but that's normal. As I've shown you before, these insects, they sleep during the day and they hide. And at night they come out to feed. So that's why I put these kitchen rolls here. I've shown you that before. And if, if we look here inside, you can see many stick insects hiding here. Maybe we should check back at night so they are coming out. But oh, here's one of them. Its face is popping out. Can you see? So yeah, these like to hide during the night. Let's see how they're doing. Wow. Okay. Now that is fantastic, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? So it looks like our black beauty stick insects have matured while I was in Brazil and my mom was taking care of them. Shedding their skins one final time. At least the females seem to have one extra instar. And as you can see, they are now quite large. And all of them are this large. I'm just showing you one of them right now, but all of them, I have like 14, 15 of them, maybe more. I should count them later. And all of them are this size. And what truly fascinates me is their tiny red little wings. Their wings have essentially been reduced to stubbles, but they can still raise them in order to expose um, the red color of their wings as a way to scare away predators, I suppose. Clearly these insects have been doing quite well with the help of my own mother. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. This is actually one of my first videos that I made on a stick insect. I am inexperienced with these and how to film them, how to make a nice stick insect video for YouTube. I'm trying my best. But the black beauty has been a highlight so far of my year. Look at how fantastic they are. This is a female. Males are much smaller. So this male and female even appear to be copulating. As you can see, their abdomens are connected. There you go. So this is a mating. As you can see, males often attach themselves to females using the abdomen. And when they are mating, males, they just sit on the back of females. They seem to do this for a long, uh, for a long time. I'm not sure how long uh, the mating lasts, but I suspect it can last for days or even longer. Males are very protective of their mate and they don't want other males to pair with the females that they found. And as you can see, this male here is just riding, riding on the back of this female right here. The females are much larger, so they, uh, they're on the bottom while the males are on top. And the females, they, they have the strength to just drag the males around when they go about their day. 
It's fascinating, isn't it? So this is a stick insect mating, people. Now, a lot of stick insects, insects do this, to my knowledge. Um, in fact, I've seen in Brazil stick insects in the wild who are doing the same. Usually it's big females of a, of a species with a small male on their backs. It's a good mating strategy for the male. Because as long as this male is sitting on top of this female right here, the ma other males don't really have a chance to uh, steal his wife, so to speak. And he wants, he wants to pass on his genes, he doesn't want other males to uh, mate with this female instead. So, as you can see, this is very typical and it's very fascinating. Now this is ba basic knowledge for most people who raised stick insects before. This is the first stick insect I've raised in like seven years, so for me it's, it's interesting and nice to see this for, for real. And since they're obviously sexually mature at this point, uh, at any moment females can start laying eggs. So that means when they lay eggs we'll have produced the next generation. And that was the goal, wasn't it? And here are stick insects having sex. Yeah, I can't sugarcoat it guys, it's what's happening. Animals have sex, that's just how it is. When stick insects pair, males can copulate with females for extended amounts of time. Males and females mate several times and the pairing seems to last hours and possibly even days. I'm not quite sure. Mating with the female for long periods of time increases the male's chance of passing on his genes by blocking other males from mating with her. As we can see, because I'm moving the cage around, some of them are starting to come out of their uh, their hiding spots right now. And we see there's uh, a lot of them exposed right now. Fantastic, eh? I really love this species. It's so beautiful. You know, the black and the red combination is just awesome. So, but one thing we should do is we should check back at night because at night that's when they are truly active as usual. Filming them like this during the day is not going to have most of them cooperate. See, as you can see, most of them immediately go back into these kitchen rolls where they just want to hide. They don't like being exposed to full, uh, full sunlight, it seems. This is really a strongly nocturnal insect most of the time, so... I expect most of these insects to just walk away and go back into their uh, caves, so to speak. But wow. So fascinating how they raise the wings as a warning. They can spray noxious chemicals too. It smells kind of bad, almost like vinegar. It's a very strange smell, it's hard to describe. It's a little bit acidic. And they can spray this substance when they feel threatened. So the red is kind of a warning. Let's see. Yep. Let's see how most of them will go back to hiding now. Sorry for waking you guys up. I missed you guys. I just want to see how you guys are doing. Yeah, there you go. This one is going back into his uh, little man cave, huh? I should say girl cave, because that was a female. Hmm, fantastic. What a beautiful insect it is. Wow.
And back inside they go. Wow, you guys are so well hidden. Such um, You're totally not exposed. Truly fantastic creatures, aren't they? Alright, let's stop harassing them. One of the things that I want to do is uh, I want to put them in a dark place and check back in the middle of the night because clearly these insects they like to hide during the day and they come out at night so the best moment to film them is, uh, is at night. So let's uh, let them sleep for now. The sun should go down in a few hours anyway so um, I am glad to know that they are doing well. All of them are mature. I didn't expect my first try with insects, uh, stick insects in many years to be this successful. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. For me this is difficult to make a stick insect video. I've never done this before. Except in some of my oldest videos from like 7 years ago when I used to raise many of them. I've forgotten most of my stick insect breeding skills. It's, it's like I'm starting all over again. I'm more specialized in moths, so this is a totally new experience, but I'm enjoying it so far. What stick insects should I raise next time? Let me know in the comments. Alright, let's check back tonight. Don't you find it funny how we're filming animals during the day, dear diary? During the day the stick insects tend to hide away, but during night they show the most activity. So here's good news. I can film in infrared and this allows us to observe the stick insects in the middle of the night, in sheer darkness. Let's show this exclusive footage. This is Bart Coppens, the moth daddy. The sexy moth king in the middle of the night. But there is a problem! We don't have any visuals! Oh no. Oh no, babe. Oh no. Oh no. How are we going to solve that? Well, it just turns out that this camera has an infrared function. Where did you? Aha! 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 So that means now we can see what these creatures are up to at night. Oh, where's your opening, babe? Let me caress your opening with my fingers. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's keep this channel a little bit family friendly. Hmm. Let's see what's happening in there. Well, there you go. Lots of activity at night. Clearly in the middle of the night these insects are quite active. Most of the time you'll just see them hanging around in the vegetation. Of course, as I, as I may have explained before in this video, these are nocturnal insects, so it's mostly the middle of the night in which you should expect to see them feeding, eating, pairing, all that good stuff. And here we see a lot of couples. A lot of the females here that are mounted by a male. Well, the females are feeding on the vegetation here. Now 
Now these are actually wonderful images. You know there's a lot of stick insect video on YouTube. But let me ask you guys my faithful viewers. How many people film their stick insects in infrared at night? Surely that's worth something, surely that's special. Oh look at that. Lots of wonderful activity here. What's really cool is this way we can observe the stick insects in a way that they don't feel disturbed. Of course during the day when there is daylight they feel uncomfortable since it's a nocturnal species. You know what's funny? The um, infrared from my camera seems to reflect less on their faces. Can you see that? Like, like where their eyes are, near their eyes. There's like this extra dark spot. That's funny. I think that's on purpose because, you know, you want to absorb as much light as possible around your ocellus. Because it can reduce your visibility if there's light reflecting from the surrounding area near your eye into your ocellus. That's a bit of a conjecture, by the way. I don't think anybody else has recorded this before. Not, not that it's like a groundbreaking scientific observation or anything, it's just a, a funny little fun fact that we just found out, but I think it's still something new. I don't think many people have filmed their st stick insects with infrared and notice that the area around their eye seems to absorb more light than the surrounding area. See, it's that area near their face, it appears to be darker. So that's... I haven't checked literature, but that could be actually a new... a small new find. Who knows? I mean, stick insects seem very popular, but there's not that many people seriously looking at them. There's a respectable amount, of course, of um, stick insect scientists. But, you know, compared to other fields of science, it's still a bit obscure. Oh, this is fascinating. Just look at them, their natural behavior. Hope I haven't disturbed them too much. Now, these two. Seem to be sitting on a some barren plant with no leaf on it. Not all of them are busy pairing. This one appears to be single and just wandering around. Judging by the shape of his body, I think. Yeah, this is a male. I wonder why this male is not pairing. I mean, pretty much the only thing these males seem to be obsessed with is pairing with the females. Sometimes pairing for so long they seem just to sit on the same female for days. Maybe he lost this female, maybe she rejected him. Or maybe another male took his female, who knows. Or he's just finished pairing and looking for food. Who knows? Hello there, Mr. Male. What you doing there on top of the cage, eh? Trying to find some delicious food. Well, the food is actually below. So you should get down if you're hungry. Ah, uh, yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Look at that. It's too bad he isn't facing me, though. Would have been nicer footage. I do really love the eyes of this species, it's quite unique. Oh, that's funny. Turns out that many of them are just also just hanging around here in the back of the container. These don't seem to need any food plant at the moment. They're just sitting on the walls of their enclosure in the corner where there's no food at all. 
I guess they're not permanently sitting on the house plant. I've read that in the wild during the day, the species likes to hide in crack and crevices of bromeliads or just rocks. But I think in the original paper that I've read, they were observed hiding in like in the in very large bromeliads. So they do have a passion for, you know, hanging out in corners, in crevices, you know, any sheltered spaces, even at night sometimes, I suppose. And here we see another pairing, male and female. It's fascinating to see them at night. I should have done this before, to be honest. That's really cool. Well, not all of them, as you can see, are eating, although some of them are. Some of them at night are just chilling around in the corners of their enclosure. Nothing wrong with that, though. Interesting. And here in the back, there's even more of them. Yep. Look at that. All of you hanging around. Here in the corners. Mm. Maybe it is time to switch on a light for a second. Oi, 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 oi. Ah. That was fun. Such lovely creatures, aren't they? Wow. You have to be lucky to raise something like this. Look at these fascinating black stick insects. With their tiny red fairy like wings. Wow! What a fantastic animal! Is this not, this not just one of the prettiest stick insects that one can possibly ever raise? Oh. Beautiful. Amazing. Really amazing. I'm really enjoying the experience. I spent many months raising these guys, so... I don't recommend handling your stick insects all day. But once in a while is okay. This is a robust species, even though you don't want to stress them all the time. Wow, fantastic. What a spectacle. What a beautiful show. Just look at that. Amazing. If you are enjoying this episode, then do please keep in mind this episode is a special reward for reaching 100 patrons on my crowdfunding platform Patreon. I've promised it multiple times. Remember it? Alright, let's stop harassing our beautiful... Oh, sorry for this. I'm closing the cage and filming that is a bit awkward, but there you go. Come on, close the zipper. Close the zipper, there you go. Let's remove this. Alright my babies. Have a nice productive night of a lot of eating and reproducing. I just wanted to show you guys what happens at night with these beautiful animals. And I just did, so let's turn it off. Good night, cutie pies. Bye bye.
Dear Diary, everything up until this point has gone very well and I'm very pleased. But there's just one thing missing. Eggs. Our babies need to reproduce and lay some eggs soon. After mating, it's the last thing that we need to complete the life cycle. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get some eggs in here. Well, the life cycle starts with eggs and it ends with eggs. So we have to find some eggs. 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 You see, the joke is that you, you expected stick insect eggs, but instead I'm, I'm showing you chicken eggs, yeah? See, it's, it's not what you expected, right? That's, that's funny. Chicken eggs, you know? You, you thought I was talking about stick insect eggs, but I mean, technically both of them are eggs, so who cares, you know? It's not even incorrect. I mean, there's a lot of animals who lay eggs, but I, like I said, we need some eggs, you know? Huh. But here, they're chicken eggs, you know? I was trying to be funny. I'm trying to entertain you. Like, it's a joke. It's a prank, <laughs> you know? It's like, hey, let's get some eggs. <laughs> Wrong eggs, oh. Yeah? You laughing? <laughs> I know it's... How did I come up with these things, right? <laughs> I don't know. Comedy just comes naturally to me, I guess, you know? <sighs> when I was young, my friends always told me I was hilarious. So, it's like, let's start a career as a YouTuber, right? Let's add some gags. Let's add, let's add some pranks, huh? Let's, let's add some jokes. Yeah. See, I got you. I got you with that one. Like, you were just watching a video about stick insects and you were expecting me to look at stick insect eggs too, you know? Because they, they lay eggs, just like, just like chickens, you know? But here we are. You didn't expect this, right? Like, you didn't expect this joke out of nowhere. <laughs> I know, it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. All right, people. So how are our stick insects doing? Well, all of them have pretty much, are pretty much still alive. Um, I think they've been adults now for well over a month. Maybe one and a half months at this point. Maybe even a little bit longer. None of them seem to have died from old age yet. I have the feeling that they can grow a couple of months old though. So I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So take a good look at all the babies that you and me raised together on this YouTube channel. Wow, fantastic, eh? This is a really unusual video for Bart Coppens to make since I'm obsessed with butterflies and moths. So it seems very out of the blue for me to make a stick insect video. But it looks like that is exactly what is happening right now. And it's pretty fantastic so far, the result has been great. Wow, what an incredible species, isn't it? Look at that. They're starting to slowly wake up, because I'm shaking the box. They were still kind of in sleepy mode right now, but they're starting to crawl out. 
But these are pretty much all of them that we raised. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm currently cleaning out the cage of our Black Beauty stick insects and I noticed something. I'm once again a daddy. They started laying eggs, that's right. That means the next generation is on its way. Which is a fantastic update because it means we almost completed the life cycle. So I put all of my stick insects in this little box for a short moment. This is not a good enclosure to keep stick insects in, but it's only because I want to have them out of their cage temporarily so I can clean it and put them back in a clean cage. But here, take a look. See how they are doing? They seem to be doing pretty fine. Sorry guys for putting you in a small plastic box just for a few seconds. One of the awkward things about stick insects is their eggs and feces kind of look similar. So this is stick insect eggs mixed with stick insect poop. So how to tell the difference? Well the eggs, and this is going to be very awkward footage because uh, it's me looking through the poop of stick insect. But the eggs should be round. Here you go. Let me get a focus here on this. This right here is what their eggs look like. Round and they have like a, almost a little bit of a camouflage pattern. So I'm going to collect the eggs and put them in this box. It's an annoying job to do because there's probably hundreds of little eggs in here. And it's going to be a nightmare of a job to get all of them out. But I really don't want to throw away any eggs. Because they're going to be the next generation of babies. Collecting the eggs is a bit of work, unfortunately. It isn't very entertaining to look at for my viewers. And it's even a bit annoying work because the eggs are just so hidden between the, the frost. Hmm. So I'm just gonna sit here and pick hundreds of eggs and it's gonna take a long time. Hmm. Yep. Females are so silly, they're essentially just big fat breeding machines, aren't they? Uh, I mean the females of the stick insect, okay? Don't be offended, I don't mean, I don't mean human females. Ooh, that sounds bad. I mean... Uh, human females are awesome, guys. No hate to you. 
I respect women. Bart Coppens respects women. That's right. Respect her. Guys, Dita is a little bit crazy. I think she needs a distraction. Your data. Dita, go fetch. What the fuck? Sorry, I don't have words to explain this, guys. But uh, enjoy. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, uh, let's let's move on. Let's move on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I collected some of their eggs. Take a look. This is the first batch of eggs, and it looks like we could have a lot of babies at this point. Well, here are some of the eggs, babes. What's quite unfortunate is that we have to wait like six months or longer to incubate them. Yeah, that's over half a year. And yep, that's a ton of waiting, unfortunately. The eggs are round, that slightly oval, brown, and with patches of lighter, lighter yellowish brown and in captivity, females drop many eggs on the floor. Well, 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 people, the cycle has almost ended. So some of the eggs that the stick insects are laid are going to be placed in vermiculite. Hey, do you remember the vermiculite from the beginning of this video? Hope you do, because that's what we placed the eggs in in the first place, remember? Now we're going to place them in here and wait. Now spray them a little. Likes to have humid vermiculite. So the humidity in there is a good idea. Spray, spray with humidity. That's right. That's exactly what we need. And now we place them on room temperature and wait. That is all. That is all. All right, folks, I collected some eggs. I did maintenance. It's time to place them back into their original enclosure. Whoop. All right, let's add the kitchen rolls. Whoop, that they like so much. Whoop. And have somewhere to hide. Whoop. I apologize guys, I'm sorry for taking you hostage for a while, it was for the best. I'm sure that you guys want a clean enclosure as well. So it's time to set you free. Now this is gonna be a bit rough, don't worry they can take it. I'm gonna shake them off a little bit. I don't recommend doing this with stick insects that are more vulnerable and fragile, but these are really robust. So I can shake them off a little bit. There you go. And now we can see how they desperately scramble around. There you go, this is all of them. Come on. Here's the last one. There you go.
those are all teams. All right, folks, there you go. Did I just call my pets folks? There. Let's pretend I was talking to the viewer. That would make more sense. Yes, fantastic. It's a great stick insect breeding. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we wait for literally half a year. Yes, we wait for another half a year. Can you believe this video took over one and a half year to develop? Including all the editing, writing and filming the life cycle of an insect that took over a year to complete, including incubating the eggs that also take half a year to incubate. Don't let anyone tell you that YouTube is an easy job. It's not, at least not for me. Maybe I should make different content. Maybe I should become an e-girl instead. Why do I keep making fun of e-girls? You wonder, what's my problem with them? I don't know, to be honest. I don't even know what it means. What is an e what's an e-girl? A girl on the internet? I guess I just like tearing people down, because I'm bitter. Let's move on. Is Bart Coppens the sexy moth king? Hmm. So attractive, huh? Um, yeah, no, let's... <laughs> let's not do that right now. Is Bart Coppens capable of raising fast mates, aka the family of stick insects and leaf insects? Well, I gotta be honest. You have to be really clueless to mess up a beginner species like Pero Fasma Shultai. But at the same time, I am kinda inexperienced. I haven't done this in a long time, so it still feels like an accomplishment. Even though it is ridiculously easy. Well, I have here some um, privet in a water bottle. I don't know if you guys recognize this little setup here. A year ago I used it to raise the babies, yes a year ago, that's how long it takes for me to make these videos, literally. Production time, a year per video. Anyway, I have a really cool announcement, we have the first baby! That's right, let's take a, a shot of it. Welcome to the world little one. So this means that we finish the life cycle of a stick insect on YouTube and that's special! Oh look! It's so small! Ah! It's so small! Dude! Yeah! This is... These are the first stick insects I raised in such a long time and I'm happy! You know, I kind of want to raise more now. Maybe that's gonna happen, who knows? I'm gonna be honest, it depends on the crowdfunding. Sorry, not sorry, I'm demonetized. I got a bag, okay? This stuff takes time and effort. Anyway, let's place the baby in a new cage. Come on, little one, go and eat. Go and eat, I know you wanna. Yes. Are you hungry? Hope you are. Hope you are hungry. Come on. Take a bite, only if you wanna. 
or just get accustomed to your enclosure if you wanna. It's gonna take a while, eh? Man, you're so small. I forgot who's, how small these babies are when they're just, like just when they're newborn. That's so cute, eh? Isn't it? It's so cute, though. Oh, adorable. Since the babies are stressed really fast, the best thing to do is to leave it alone. I'm not going to show you how I'm raising the second generation though, because the point of this video was to show you the whole life cycle. And we can do it again and again and again and again, but you've already seen all the life stages, so there you go. Yay! Yep, it's baby time. We're having so much babies. Let me show you some raw footage of me finding more and more babies. Wow. The world needs more babies, people. More babies of insects, that is. We have more than enough humans. So I think that's the end of the breeding portion of this video. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this marks the end of our episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It was something completely new for my channel. For seven or maybe even eight years, I have been constantly documenting life cycles of moths for you on this channel. Like, I must have documented over a hundred moth life cycles on this channel, but never before have I done a stick insect. What do you guys think? Did I do a good job? I really tried my best here to film everything, to show the whole process, even though I'm a beginner at it. If people like it, if people share it, if it gets views, I will consider trying more of this. Now my heart, my biggest passion will still be Bashir's but it cannot hurt to have some really cool variation on this channel. And it will make your day if you just happen to see your favorite species on my channel, you know. Maybe it will make some people happy. I'm here to entertain. I'm here to make you guys happy. That's my job. And hope you had a good time. I certainly did. That being said, we have to end the video. We completed the whole life cycle. Now, I still have hundreds of eggs here that are hatching. New babies are coming out every day. But waiting for all of them to come out is going to take many, many, many months. Um, and I don't see the point because we already filmed all the life stages. So what's the point in doing that, right? I think we pretty much completed our mission to show the whole life cycle of Peru Fasma Schultai. And we did. So I'm, I'm going to stop right here. Uh, that's the end of our new project. 
And now, when we breed insects in captivity, for me it's really important that we learn about them, right? There are so many exotic pet owners on YouTube who just show off their animals senselessly without educating people about what these animals are and what makes them special. Well, I like to be different. I want to be the YouTuber that also educates people in detail. So now let me give you a rundown of Peufasma Shute. Poof! Today we are talking about the black beauty stick insect and what makes them so special. Perufasma schultai, a beginner friendly species in the hobby with a fascinating ecology for sure. I like to go a little bit in depth about them. Despite not being a specialist in stick insects myself, I can do my best to educate others. But first, some legal blah blah. This presentation uses copyrighted photos and illustrations that I am permitted to use under the fair use law. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, edu scholarship education and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might, over, might otherwise be infringing. This video is not monetized and I am not making advertisement money from it. Despite that, commercial uses are less likely to be considered fair, though it's possible to monetize a video and still be fair use as long as the work is transformative, educational and not a replacement of the original material. I am allowed to use the pictures in this presentation. The interesting history of this species goes back to 2002, when a new paper was published. Studies on Neotropical Phasmatodea, a remarkable new species of Perufasma by Conla and Heneneman from 2002, described from northern Peru. It was published in Zootaxa and it states how a remarkable new phasmid from the Cordillera del Condor in northern Peru is described and illustrated from both the sexes and the eggs. Information about breeding and its biology are also included. The article then goes on to state that this remarkable new species appears restricted to a very small area in Cordillera del Condor in northern Peru. And it lives at an altitude of about 1200 to 1800 meters and is found in small patches of dwarf forest. The host plant is a so far unidentified species of Schines from the Anacariaceae family, also known as Peruvian pepper tree. And the species appears to be strongly monophagous in the wild. During the day, these nocturnal phasmids hide in the leaf basins of big tilansias, which are bromeliads which grow in the original habitat on vertical rock cliffs. Located on the eastern slopes of the equatorial Andes, the area Cordillera del Condor is a recognized global biodiversity hotspot with large areas of pristine montane habitat. In 1993, Conservation International led a biodiversity assessment trip to the area and identified dozens of species completely new to science. Their report, which is called the Cordillera del Condor region of Ecuador and Peru, a biological assessment, noted this spectacular biodiversity in the area and its key role in the hydro hydrological cycle linking the Andes with the Amazon. Considering the fact they live in higher elevations from 1200 to 1800 meters, it is likely that they have warm and humid days combined with colder and cooler nights due to the sheer elevation. Now, while the true definition of the range of the species is most likely not completely defined yet in the wild, it's said that the whole species could be contained in an area that could be, could be, as small as five hectares perhaps. While it's difficult to find any real official sources on this, if this information is true, that means the species is endemic to a ridiculously small area and therefore very sensitive and may or may not be critically endangered. 
That means potentially the whole species is contained in an area smaller than 12 football fields in the wild. Now some of you may think 12 football fields sound like a lot of space, but it's ridiculously small, considering it presumably, presumably contains the whole species. That means that even the slightest disruption or degradation of their habitat could have a massive impact on them. Stick insects often use their wings to fly, but a number of species uses them for intimidation too. Bright colors startle predators or advertise the fact that some species of stick insects can spray noxious, smelly or irritating fluid towards their enemies. When it comes to perophasma, their small little wings supposedly intimidate their enemies. In captivity, the insects can be reared on many plants. In the wild, they supposedly utilize schines from the Anacariaceae family. In captivity, Ligustrum, Aucuba and Lonicera are reportedly reliable host plants for this stick insect. The species is forgiving, beginner friendly and can tolerate a wider range of temperatures, or so it seems. Perufasma schulti is also capable of spraying a defensive spray if they feel threatened. Interestingly, my stick insects never once did this. I'm not sure why. Maybe they become habituated to being handled and disturbed by humans in captivity and less inclined to spray me. Who knows? Either way, it's an interesting fact that they are definitely capable of it if they want to. One of the chemicals in the spray appears to be perufasmal, a unique stereoisomer, which is presumably one of the defens defensive agents. It's said the substance smells bad and can be irritating. The defensive spray also contains glucose, it seems. Iridoids themselves have long been recognized as important defensive metabolites in insects. Either way, I'm not going in great detail today, just a summary and a fact Perufasma seem to have some sort of unique defensive compound. Fun fact. Did you know the females have one extra molt? The males seem to have one fewer instar compared to the females. Therefore they mature a little bit earlier. Either way, Perufasma schulti is a beginner friendly species. They don't need extra heating and will survive around room temperature even in Europe pretty well. They seem to tolerate both dry and rather more humid conditions. Although the nymphs, the small nymphs, are a little bit more sensitive to having the right amount of humidity. But honestly, they seem tolerant and very forgiving in most aspects of their biology. Even for a beginner like me, it was hard to mess them up. If the insect is really critically endangered and endemic to a super small area, then is it really ethical to raise them in captivity? Hmm, let's talk about it, because I strive to keep insects in ethical and legal ways that are sustainable. Now, if we analyze the situation, we re realize that the black beauty stick insect has become one of the most popular stick insects in the pet trade. It's very widespread and um, I, can t I can see why. It's because they are simply quite beautiful. The black and red is amazing and they're really easy to raise for a beginner like me. So, that being said, what are the implications for their conservation? So the biggest threat to insects is pretty much always habitat destruction. The degradation of their wild habitat, their wild environment by humans. And this can happen in several ways, but one of the most common ways habit habitats become degraded is through, for example, deforestation. Forests are cut down and for species in such a small surface area, if any tiny part of their habitat is destroyed, it would be uh, basically a huge setback for them as a species. If you think about it, they're kind of hanging on life support because it wouldn't take much effort for humans to ruin the whole area that the species is supposedly endemic to. I'm saying supposedly because I don't think there is that much extensive data, who knows? It would be nice if there was a second population somewhere. You never know, but it's possible for insects to be endemic to a small area sometimes. The thing is though, you can ask yourself the question, does being popular in the pet trade benefit the species in some way? I would say yes and no. 
it benefits the species in a way that they become really visible when it's literally one of the most popular insects in the pet trade a lot of people see them a lot of people are become interested in them a lot of people think about them and i think this moves people to care about their conservation and a good example is me and this video if i was not raising these stick insects as pets right now i would not be talking about this species on youtube and in that sense, existing in the pet trade can be indirectly beneficial to a species because people are going to experience it and see it and they're going to start caring about it. That being said, in order to bring something in the pet trade, some individuals do have to be removed from the wild. And for a species that is that endemic to a small area as this one, I would be very careful with taking any eggs or stick insects out of their habitat because the, you know, any individual you remove from the wild basically is a, a big, bigger loss for the species because they're all living in this tiny area. And presumably that means there is not a terribly large amount of individuals of them compared to many other species of insects. So it's hard to say if it's negl negligible and to what extent, how many, how many individuals could you sustainably remove from the wild before hurting the species. So but one of the advantages of the pet trade, especially for this species because they are so easy to breed, is that breeding them in captivity, it satisfies a demand. The thing is, especially when it comes to rare species, there's always going to be a demand for them. The same is with the rare butterflies and moths. I'm more specialized in butterflies and moths, it's more my expertise. And what you see is with very rare butterflies and moths, collectors are going to collect them uh, either legally or illegally. It's kind of like the rhino horn story. It's illegal to kill rhinos and collect their horns because it endangers the species. But because of that, the prices of rhino horns go up because it's illegal, it's unattainable, but there's always be going to be some crazy people that are going to capture these animals no matter what. No matter if it's illegal, these are the people who will take anything they want and they stop at nothing. And in that sense, I think raising an insect in the pet trade can be good because it satisfies the demand, right? Imagine if rhinos were easy to breed. They are not. But imagine if rhinos were as easy to breed as cows. For the existence of the species that would be good news because it means you can breed many rhinos, you can sell the horns for example, and the prices and demands would go down and poaching would decrease to a certain level. Then again you could make the counter argument and say well if you're doing that you're feeding into the market, you know. That's also true. Um, at the same time, I don't condone collecting insects without the proper permits from the wild. And to a certain, in a certain extent, you are feeding a demand in that exists in the pet trade for animals that may or may not have been collected legally. So it's a difficult situation. But in my opinion, I'm not under the impression that these insects are regularly removed from the wild. And I, ex I think that just because they exist in captivity right now, it's a good idea to keep breeding them. Because as long as this bloodline exists in captivity, people are going to be less inclined to steal them from the wild. And I think if this species, for example, would disappear from the pet trade, people are going to miss them and maybe return to their habitat to collect them. I don't know, it could happen, right? And that's what you want to prevent. Now I do think breeding this species can be a little bit sustainable because they seem to be, despite inbreeding for generations, they seem to be healthy. They seem to resist inbreeding to a certain degree. Um, and it doesn't seem to reduce their fitness that much. I don't know for how many generations one bloodline of stick insects can be raised in captivity before the lack of gen genetic diversity starts to affect them. But I do think for the many years to come, people all over the world can raise this insect sustainably. And when they do so, they're not impacting the species in the wild. So I'm kind of in the middle. I'm also, actually, I'm, um, I'm kind of in favor of breeding them. First of all, uh, I think it kind of benefits them, kind of, because it, it puts the species out there. You know, YouTubers will me, like me will start filming them, start talking about them, about their conservation. 
um, and it's going to inspire other people to care about insects and their conservation. Nothing is as powerful as being able to see an insect up close, interact with it, handle them yourself and see them for real, you know, and that's when you get the emotional investment in nature and animals. And that part is really beneficial, I think, from conservation perspective. And I also think that the sustainable breeding of this insect on a big scale, especially people who are committed to keep this insect in the pet trade, I think that's beneficial as well. You're satisfying the demand in a way that prevents people from going out there and taking them from the wild because it's easy to get them from other breeders. And as long as we keep that thing going, I would say it's harmless. I'm not sure how much insects were initially collected for study when they were taken from the wild and described as a new species. I think it was related to uh, at least systematics, taxonomy and science, which would justify it more if that's true. Because you are taking something for research and not just for your entertainment. And yeah. That being said, there has to be a balance here. There has to be a balance here. Because I don't want to say that you can breed whatever you want and take anything you want from the wild. Because it's harmless. Because in some cases, the trafficking of invertebrates on a big scale, especially if it would happen to a species like this, that's so endemic to a small area, I could see it being harmful if it's done on a large scale. But I don't see that happening because of how popular the species is and how widespread they are right now. So yeah. I think that in the current situation is not harmful and I would promote breeding them. I think it's a good thing, but we have to be a little bit careful and it would be nice if people commit themselves to raising these in captivity, even though it's boring to raise the same species over and over. Keeping them in the pet trade would be a good thing and we would have to avoid going to a point where People are forced to collect them from the wild somehow because of a lack of demand in captivity. You know, keep the demand and supply at the same level and that will prevent poaching. But it's hard to say. The pet trade is not always that innocent, but I'm generally in favor of it really. That being said, it's very easy to blame hobbyists, isn't it? It's very easy to point the finger and say, oh, these people, they are brown boxing there taking insects from exotic insects from the wild illegally. But really, it's big corporations that we should blame, right? It's big corporations, it's farmers that cut down the forest. They want uh, plantations of stuff like, I don't know what, what they farm in Peru, but in general deforestation happens because, for example, of palm oil, especially in Asia, like Borneo and Papua, massive forests are cut down for palm oil plantations. Palm oil is used in, in soap, shampoos, uh, even in Nutella, in chocolate, even in uh, a lot of products. And these are mega corporations destroying entire forest. But um, you can also see in uh, South America, for example, there's uh, plantations of cassava, massive plantations of cassava. But also, uh, for example, pastures to grow beef. The meat consumption and the export of beef and especially in the farmers who want more and more and more and keep burning down the forest to make more pastures and grow more cows. And they sell the meat to big corporations who massively export it to, for example, Europe and the West. Those we should blame. We should point the finger at them. Point the finger at big corporations who pollute and destroy forest. As hobbyists who like insects, we should take accountability. And I'm not saying I don't have any accountability. But it's important not to take too much accountability because we do make a very easy scapegoat. And the collection of insects and the pet trade has rarely been responsible for the extinction of endangerment of species compared to the massive, incredible destruction that the industry, big corporations, big capital are doing to our environment. And we should hold them in count and uh, we should hold them uh, accountable instead of our fellow bug enthusiasts. That's what I think. It's an easy distraction. We are making an easy scapegoat. Oh, you're collecting butterflies. Ooh, you're contributing to their extinction. I don't know. I think our countries benefit millions of dollars from the export of goods that are farmed in these areas, often illegally. Stuff like hardwood, 
stuff like palm oil, stuff like beef, stuff like soy, think about your consumption. So, but maybe that's a bit going off on a contingent because this piece is so concentrated. Uh, it's a more local small scale problem in this case, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, this channel is completely demonetized and I hate having to crowdfund, I hate it. But I have to do it, I have to bring some awareness to a very important message I'm going to tell you next. Let's go to the crowdfunding part of the video because I'm demonetized. Alright people, so how are our stick insects doing? Well all of them have pretty much, are pretty much still alive. Um, I think they've been adults now for well over a month. Maybe one and a half months at this point. Maybe even a little bit longer. None of them seem to have died from old age yet. I have the feeling that they can grow a couple of months old though. So I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So take a good look at all the babies that you and me raised together on this YouTube channel. Wow, fantastic, eh? This is a really unusual video for Bart Coppens to make since I'm obsessed with butterflies and moths. So it seems very out of the blue for me to make a stick insect video. But it looks like that is exactly what is happening right now. And it's pretty fantastic so far, the result has been great. Wow. What an incredible species, isn't it? Look at that. They're starting to slowly wake up because I'm shaking the box. They were still kind of in sleepy mode right now, but they're starting to crawl out. But these are pretty much all of them that we raised. Last but not least, before we really end the video, I would want to apologize Sorry for having to add these crowdfunding segments to the end of my YouTube videos. I know it's a little bit blatant. I know it's a little bit blunt. I know that I have a really big audacity to ask for things like these and remind people to them. But you know, I think that if you want things in life, you have to ask for them. And if you don't ask, then there's a chance you're not going to receive. So I am just going to be bold and brash and remind people of that but I do want to say I understand that not everybody is willing or able to financially support another youtuber and it doesn't make you less of a viewer if you don't I really want to get that out there I appreciate everybody who is watching my videos whether you are liking whether you are commenting or sharing them with your friends or just enjoying them alone this message is only for those who are willing and able I understand if you don't, it doesn't make you any less of a viewer, you are completely welcome to join and enjoy all my videos for free. That's how this channel has always been. We want to promote insects, their beauty, their importance, their complexity and amazing life histories. And I feel like we are doing a really good job of that. So thank you guys for watching, hope to see you again in my next video. There's going to be some awesome insects on this YouTube channel very soon. Don't miss it. Thank you guys for everyone who donated and helped me reach the goal. Let me play the credits of all the people subscribed to my Patreon who made this possible. And see you next time. Have a nice day. Bye bye. So let me set another goal for the future. If we reach 130 members on my Patreon, I'm going to make another stick insect video. What species could it be? I'm going to keep that a secret for now, but it's going to be a fascinating one. I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but if it does, I will be back with another stick insect life cycle. That's right. Maybe that's some motivation for more people to join my Patreon. Now, I am somebody that is specialized in Lepidopterans. Lepidopterans are butterflies and moths. Most of my YouTube channel are about butterflies and moths, not about stick insects. So making this video was for me a very unusual experience, but it was very enjoyable. Stick insects are actually very fun to keep in captivity. And I kind of feel an itch to try more. 
So like I said, I made this video as a reward when we finally hit 100 members on my Patreon account. And we did it. But you know what? Hmm, I think I can take it one step further. So if you donate to my channel by becoming a member on my Patreon, not only are you supporting my work in insect conservation, supporting my YouTube channel and my ability to make more entertaining videos for you, but you're also eligible for rewards, special videos, a monthly viewer FHQ and much more. Moth and insect team stickers, mugs, posters, merchandise. And you'll become a part of my team of people who regularly support me and the way I promote insects and their conservation on social media. That's a win-win. Last but not least, there's also other ways to donate. You can donate with PayPal, you can donate with Ko-Fi, you can donate with LiberaPay. There's many ways in which you can make a contribution to my YouTube channel. And in return for you, I will make more unusual videos. In fact, this YouTube video right here, even though I said it multiple times, but this YouTube video is a reward for my viewers because we reached 100 patrons on the crowdfunding platform Patreon. Patreon is a subscription-based platform and it costs as little as one dollar a month to become a member of my Patreon. And I always said to my fans in a recent announcement, if we can reach 100 members on my Patreon, I'm going to do a special video where I film the life cycle of the black beauty stick insect, Perufas Mashultai. Hmm, and guess what? It worked. Ladies and gentlemen, it happened. That means that every month, 100 people are donating to my channel on a monthly basis and that's a big achievement it makes me happy and hopefully it makes you happy because it means i have the time and money to make videos like this now internet begging has always been a little bit embarrassing to me it feels a little bit shameless to bring this up and blatantly ask people for money unfortunately that is just how my channel and my business model operates it is either you swim or you drown, and I have to ask people and I have to remind people. The good news is though, if you sponsor my channel, you also get things in return. It is not only a one-sided uh, one transaction, because if you're a member of my Patreon, especially if you are in one of the higher tiers on my Patreon crowdfunding website, you are eligible for rewards and merchandise. And just to show you, this is, what you, this is what can arrive to you by the mail if you are a member of my Patreon. I make insect themes merchandise. These include posters, t-shirts, mugs, stickers, postcards and mini prints. Take a look. And here we actually have a mug. I develop it myself. It's a, a picture of one of the moths I raised on my YouTube channel. It's a Lobo Bionea Christi. It's very cute, as you can see. And this is one of the rewards if you subscribe to my Patreon account. Can you see that, guys? There you go. And with that, we are slowly coming to the conclusion of what I'm trying to convey. And that is that, guys, if you like this YouTube channel, if you like the video you just watched, if you like my work, the things that I am doing with entomology, insect conservation, filming insect life cycles on YouTube, then please, please consider tipping or donating. Because my YouTube channel is 100% demonetized by YouTube and I don't make any money from making videos like these. I'm completely reliant on the generosity of my fans and viewers and the value that they see in my channel and their willingness to invest in me as a person, my online business and my YouTube videos and other content. Apart from my work with insects, however, it is often very hard to find the time and resources to do social media. 
especially YouTube videos like these just take so much, such an incredible amount of time. I've been developing this video for over a year. Anybody who has raised stick insects in captivity know much how, how much time and work this is. Especially if you want to film their development, everything they are doing. And all of their life stages and instars, you have to regularly film them, film how you're taking care of them. And every time they grow a little bit bigger, make an update. It's been a hell of a ride and a lot of filming, a lot of editing and writing and a lot of effort. Did you like the first stick insect life cycle that I ever managed to film guys and girls? If so, I should consider filming more of them. It does take a huge amount of time, however. It takes even longer than the moth videos that I usually film. I just hope my hard work has paid off. I do have to say there are many stick insects in this world and some of them are incredible. Who knows what species I will try to raise next? With your support it could happen. Since my channel is completely demonetized though, I rely on crowdfunding for this to happen. This explains why I have to mention it once in a while. My channel is small, my channel is very niche, my channel is obscure and insects are not that popular and my contact content make, takes ages to make. I invest a lot of time and resources into making entertaining videos for you guys. But this is quite simply not possible without the support of my viewers. You see YouTube permanently demonetized my channel several years ago and they still owe me an explanation but they never bother to tell me why they demonetized me. I've sent them many emails and in their reply they outright state that they can't tell me which rule or guideline I have even violated in order to be permanently demonetized. This lack of income makes it hard for me to improve and grow my channel, since making videos does cost time and money unfortunately. Consider that if you become a Patreon of my YouTube channel today, that you receive rewards in return. My patrons receive exclusive insect themed merchandise. Merchandise that I have designed and developed myself using my own pictures and my own designs and my own videos. They include postcards, stickers and even mugs, t-shirts, posters and more. So in return for sponsoring your favorite channel you do get some physical rewards in return. Consider becoming a patron of me by signing up to my Patreon. Now while I hate that I'm forced to bring attention to this constantly, it's how my channel has managed to survive so far. Considering the time and equipment that I need for it. Of course, no one owes me anything and everybody is free to watch my channel. This message is only for those who are willing and able to afford it. There are also alternative ways to support it such as via PayPal, Ko-Fi and other means available in the description. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you had fun and learned new things about insects and nature. Oh, last but not least, I would also like to pay attention to Redbubble. On the website Redbubble I have designed numerous custom butterfly and moth designs. You can order them on t-shirts, prints, stickers, mugs and much more. And all of the moths and butterflies I photographed myself, personally. I made them using my own pictures. And that's how many insects I have photographed in one lifetime. A lot of them. And the money that I raised from the sales I used for insect conservation and the production of entertaining and educational insect videos. And now it's time for the credits.